Or that's a thing here. Um, so <laughs> my story uh, is a very, very deeply personal one, why I started this company. It was not a checklist at all. I kind of backed into it. Um, and I want to walk you through that. And you know, it, it really starts with, uh, if you'll imagine with me for a second, and kind of put yourself in the shoes uh, of what happened. So imagine you wake up one day, and you're totally fine the night before. You didn't eat anything funky. Um, you didn't feel uh, poorly. But you wake up, and one of your eyes is just not working. It's just, just betraying you. Uh, colors are gone. Your vision's blurry. Kind of hurts. And you kind of go through processes. Everyone's had something like this happen, right? Um, and no matter what, you rub it, you blink, you wash it, you talk to some friends. No one relates to it. And they're like, something's up with you. You do what almost everyone does, which is you go online, you type in I dysfunctional or whatever. You end up at a terrible website called WebMD, uh, usually around <laughs> 2 in the morning. And uh, WebMD, why is it a terrible website? Because every page on WebMD ends with you are going to die in 24 hours. <laughs> and you have to rush to the hospital. You have a brain tumor. Whatever it is, it's not helpful. Um, and so you do finally what you really need to do, which is you, you call your doctor. And you go ahead and you make an appointment. Um, and they do some tests on you, they check you out, and uh, you, then you wait, right? You wait a couple of days, terrible um, to wait. And uh, you notice the doctor didn't wave you out of there immediately and say there's nothing wrong with you, so you know something's coming. You go back in and they sit you down and they tell you, um, in this case, hey, uh, I hate to break this to you, but you have multiple sclerosis. You have an illness that will never leave you, that will always uh, destroy your body from the inside out. Uh, it will attack your brain, your central nervous system, you'll probably be in a wheelchair, you'll probably have difficulty talking, communicating, and living a normal life. And the medicines are uh, terrible. They cost six figures. They have side effects as bad as the illness. Um, and so uh, off you go. This sounds ridiculous, but honestly, this, what, this is what happens. Um, and this happened to a very, very close friend of mine. And I was sort of uh, an eyewitness to all of this going down. And again, it seems like I'm kind of making it out to me. And I hope you never are in that situation where you see just how real that situation I described is to anyone that goes through any sort of diagnosis or on. on Honestly, if you zoom it out a little bit, anyone that goes through a change that they really didn't want or expect. Um, and here's, you know, let's, let's focus on uh, multiple sclerosis, as ultimately it's very tied to the origin uh, of the company. Here's something where almost 3 million people have this, right? It's not that rare, unfortunately. And 200 more, by the end of today, 200 more people will have gone through what I just described. Um, and yet, there's this incredible feeling of isolation. You're alone with this. Um, and it doesn't matter. These statistics, you may even not even know them. It's just that very deeply personal, oh my gosh, what happened? And who's going to help me? Um, and so I saw this happen, and I was just so affected by it, the sense of hopelessness and isolation. Um, and you know, you'll find, I'm sure as you've gone through all the entrepreneurship uh, talks, uh, challenges are opportunities, right? And this was a very, very deeply personal challenge to see my friend go through this. And uh, I refused to believe that this was the status quo, that you would just have to get ill and maybe take some medicines that didn't really help. And so I threw myself into it the best I could. Eric kind of rattled off my training, but I'm, I'm, I'm straddled the sides of engineering and marketing. Um, and so I was able to kind of figure out, hey, there's actually lots of really smart people tackling this illness, like every illness. Um, and that's something that we're very thankful to God for. There's lots of really brilliant people, companies, colleges, universities, attacking conditions. And the problem with that is that the people who have these conditions rarely know what's going on. Um, and because it's a, uh, it's a dismissive attitude, quite frankly, that the doctors either don't have time or don't have faith in the research to pass it all the way to the patients. And they also don't want to build false hope. And there's various excuses. But the reality is, when you tell someone who's just been hit by essentially a you know, uh, car in their life in this way, that there are people trying to make this better. There are people trying to make this go away. Uh, they immediately move into a better state. So that's what I did. I built a website called This Is MS because I was going through the research and on a daily basis there was tons of new uh, research being posted, peer reviewed, and even if it was 10 years away, it was a sense that, you know what, things aren't going to be the way they are now always. And I said, well, I'm not going to just share it with my friend. Why not put this out there for everybody to, uh, everybody's affected by this condition, patients, caregivers, loved ones, to be able to take it in. And that's how I started. It was a moonlighting job. I was a product manager at a networking company. And this is what I do when I come home at night. I would do research, post it on a website. And this is what it looks like. In fact, this website still exists. Um, and so what happened is people started coming. And uh, they immediately started to bond. It was a complete surprise to me that a sort of community formed around this situation. And looking back now with the wisdom of, of hindsight, you're taking a mask that a person wears all day long, which is, hey, I've got this going on in my life. And there's no way I'm going to let my coworkers know or even sometimes family know, because really they're not going to be able to help. But you put them in an environment, virtual or real, 
where they can take that mask off and be themselves, right? And say, hey, you know what? My life is affected by this thing. Um, or, you know, my wife's life or whatever it is. And amazing magic happens. People started to check up on each other and they started to do their own independent research and really started to blow my mind um, what was going on. And I'd like to stress at this point, that website sort of belongs in the Museum of Ancient Website History, right? I mean, look, it was nothing that you'd expect today. It's not, um, you know, uh, mobile design. It had no multimedia. It was essentially blue, white, and black and text, right? And so I like to use the metaphor sort of, you know, it was black and white TV versus what we'd consider, you know, HD or, or 3D TV today. But look what happened, right? So I did this for about a year and change, just, again, moonlighting for my own personal gratification, ultimately and to help uh, a small community that it formed. And then I got something that shook me to my core, and we talk about sort of rule number three, you gotta fall in love, right? Um, this was the love at, you know, not first sight, but the thing that changed me. And this is, uh, on my way to work one morning, I got an email from someone who used the multiple sclerosis site. And, you know, um, email's long, and I couldn't pull it all out, but I kind of pulled out the four sentences that really made uh, uh, the impact. And my, you know, summary of that story, it was a gentleman with multiple sclerosis, he had it for a decade, he was confined to a wheelchair, and his story was very simple. It was, hey, I had reached a point last night. This is an email to me. He doesn't know who I am. Um, hey, administrator of website. Um, I reached this point where I was ready to take my own life. Right? He was at a point of suicide, um, and he said something compelled him to search one more time. And he went to Google, typed in multiple sclerosis support, whatever it was, and he's like, I ended up on your website, and I've been up all night. And for the first time in this decade, I feel a glimmer of hope. And I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I get goosebumps every time I tell the story. I tell the story a zillion times because I read this, um, and you can kind of think sort of the reaction felt like this. Uh, I don't know why there was water in my mouth at the time, but I did feel like I was absolutely slapped in the face um, by sort of the gravity of what this person had had bothered to write me. I mean, this was something so simple and something I did, you know, uh, in free time, and it, ultimately someone was crediting it with saving their life. And so these four sentences ultimately, you know, they represented a lot of change in this person's life, right? We hopefully had gone from a position of desperation to some hope. Uh, it changed my life um, because I quit my job in, in a period of 24 hours and just started off on this adventure that's led me here. Um, and, you know, it really ultimately, I believe, they're four sentences that changed the world. Because as Eric kind of told you guys, you don't uh, see and interact with this site perhaps on a daily basis, but tens of millions of people do. And uh, you'll see some stats later. They'll tell you how much the site has, has impacted, and we've saved tens of thousands of lives. And so when I decided to say, this is probably a better use of my skills and talents than working at a networking company, um, you know, I had to, of course, run it through then uh, rule two, which was the business case. Right? Is this just me being getting very emotional and very psychotic and feeling like I could go change the world? Um, I had to run it through some quick filters. And first of all, the, the thing that, that dawned on me when I got that email the power of what uh, was going on at that very simple website dedicated to one condition could be generalized to anyone. It doesn't have to be a condition, right? Every person in this room has a really interesting set of experiences. We'll dig into that. Um, and some are awesome and some are really not that awesome. Um, and the ability to connect with someone else that gets it, profoundly powerful. On an, obviously an extreme where you're saying, hey, this could save someone's life. But on a day-to-day -day basis, in fact, our friends are the ones that understand us best. Um, and sharing experiences is very core to our, our nature. And so I started to really think before I you know, turned in my resignation, if I'm feeling this way, what, what's the market? Right? Let's test out the very basic assumptions. Right? And it was about, hey, it wasn't about MS. It was about sharing an experience. And so, wow, experiences, is that weird that people share experiences? No. Experiences are inherently social. We have them to share them. And in fact, that's only gotten more so as time has gone on. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, et cetera. It's almost like if I've done something, it hasn't happened unless I've posted it and shared it with someone. Um, and so that's a very, very powerful indicator. Even, um, you know, we're talking five, six years ago when I was starting this. Um, the addressable market, right? You don't want to build something that 10 people can use or even two and a half million people can use. I did a very quick, you know, back of the envelope. I said, how many people on earth have experiences? Oh, everybody, right? How many experiences do they have? Oh, wow, like infinite. Uh, and so it was, uh, it, Ultimately, that was our space. Um, and you know, ultimately, also, what value did you provide? It's not just fun to share just because it's something we do. Uh, we do it because we like to have someone else interact with us. We do it because we can share our own wisdom. Uh, why are we here today talking, right? We feel good to be able to share some of the things that we've gone through. And you know, the support and wisdom is one thing, but then you also think about Oprah Winfrey, 
right? All the experiences on her show was compelling as it was. It was discovery. It was like I want to know what it's like to be a crazy, you know, Tom Cruise action for a day, right? And it's learning about somebody else's experiences. So I was like, tick, tick, tick. I got something special here. And one of my um, early investors, a uh, gentleman by the name of Ron Conway, one of the godfathers of Silicon Valley, he has a really cool maxim, right? And he's like, when you're thinking about a consumer internet company, just run it through this quick filter, which is, are you taking an offline or real world behavior, and are you bringing it online? Um, and if you're doing that, where you're bringing it online, where it's easier, faster, perhaps cheaper, you've tapped into something that's fundamental, right? And so that's exactly what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about something humans did since campfires, um, and now we're bringing it into an environment where two people who may end up being the best of friends but never would have met uh, have an opportunity to connect. And that became um, Experience Project.